From Earth's Water Cycle by Diane Dakers Water, water everywhere. Water is all around us. About 70% of Earth is covered with water. Look at a photo of the planet from space. All the blue parts are water. That's why Earth is sometimes called the blue planet. Water is the most abundant or plentiful substance on Earth, and one of the most important. Water World About 97% of all the water on Earth is contained in five oceans. The Atlantic, Pacific, Indian, Arctic, and Antarctic. Ocean water is salt water. Only about 3% of the planet's water is fresh water. That's the kind of water that people and animals drink. About two-thirds of Earth's fresh water is not available to drink because it is frozen as ice in the Arctic and in Antarctica. Just one-third of all fresh water is found in rivers and lakes and underground. This adds up to only about 1% of all the world's water being available as drinking water. This photo from space shows Earth's western hemisphere. It also dramatically illustrates why we call our world, which is 70% covered with water, the blue planet. The clouds that swirl around the planet are also filled with water. They play a major role in Earth's weather patterns and in the water cycle. Water is the only substance on Earth that naturally exists in three states, solid, liquid, and gas. Solid water takes the form of ice or snow. In addition to the ice and snow around Earth's north and south poles, glaciers and icebergs are made of solid water. Liquid water is what fills our oceans, lakes, rivers, and streams. Water also soaks into the ground where gravity pulls it deeper and deeper. The underground water is called groundwater. Water exists as a gas in our air. In this form, it is called water vapor. Up to 4% of our air is made of gaseous water or water vapor. This amount varies from day to day and place to place. Earth's North Pole is covered with floating sea ice over the Arctic Ocean. You can't see water vapor or smell it or taste it, but sometimes you can feel it. On a hot, muggy day, it is the water vapor that makes the air feel humid, clammy, or damp. Another way you can tell that liquid water has turned into water vapor is to hang wet laundry on the clothesline. Eventually, the laundry is no longer wet. That's because the liquid water has turned into vapor and escaped into the air. The only time you can see water vapor is when a lot of it collects in one place and starts to cool. At that point, water vapor turns into steam. For example, when a tea kettle boils, a tiny cloud of steam comes out of the spout. That's because the hot water in the kettle quickly turns to vapor collects in a small area, and immediately begins to cool. The steam is actually a collection of tiny water droplets floating in the air. The steam coming out of this tea kettle is actually a tiny cloud of water droplets. It forms when water vapor from within the kettle comes into contact with cooler air outside of the kettle. Cycles make the world go round. A cycle is a pattern of related processes or events that happens over and over again. Like a circle, a cycle has no beginning and ending. It just keeps going and going and going. Cycles of life. Every day, our planet performs many cycles. In fact, every day is a cycle, and so is every year. One very obvious cycle is the changing of the seasons. This cycle occurs as Earth orbits or travels around the sun. Spring, summer, fall, winter. That's a cycle that happens over and over again, year after year. The water cycle. Some of Earth's cycles are quite complicated. The water cycle, for example, has many steps. Powered by energy from the sun and by gravity, water is in constant motion. As a natural substance that cannot be created or destroyed, all the water that exists on the planet moves through its three states, cycling from Earth to the sky and back to Earth, again and again in a never-ending cycle. The raindrops falling in this pond may have been part of an ocean wave just a few weeks ago. The never-ending cycle. 
After a rainfall, water sits in a puddle. The puddle water eventually evaporates into the air where water vapor cools, condenses, and collects into droplets and forms clouds until it rains again. That's a super simple version of the water cycle. The path of that puddle water is part of a never-ending cycle that is constantly moving all the water on our planet, from the sky to the earth and back to the sky. The cycle includes not only bodies of water, the land, and the sky, but also all of Earth's plants and animals. Let's look at the water cycle one step at a time, beginning with the biggest water source on the planet, the oceans. As heat from the sun warms water near the ocean surface, it gives water molecules the energy to evaporate into the air as water vapor. When ocean water evaporates, salt in the seawater stays behind. This means that the water vapor is fresh water. A simple water cycle. Water vapor condenses into droplets. Water droplets form clouds. Droplets fall as rain. Water evaporates. Then we go back to water vapor condensing into droplets. Heat from the sun, surface of water, water molecules evaporating into the air, water molecules in the ocean. As heat from the sun warms water near the ocean surface, it gives water molecules the energy to evaporate into the air as water vapor. When ocean water evaporates, salt in the seawater stays behind. This means that the water vapor is fresh water. Into the air. All the water that exists on Earth has been here for millions of years. Even though water changes states, most of it is, and has always been, contained in liquid form in the world's oceans. The surface area of Earth's ocean is vast, so it absorbs a huge amount of sunlight every day. The energy in that sunlight warms the seawater near the surface, giving water molecules the energy they need to escape or evaporate into the air. The warmer the air, the warmer the water, and the more liquid converts to gas or water vapor. This step in the water cycle is evaporation, and it also happens in lakes, rivers, and other freshwater bodies. This isn't the only way that liquid water becomes water vapor, though. Remember that plants contain a lot of water, too. A plant takes in water from the soil through its roots. The water that travels up the stem and to all parts of the plant, eventually reaching the leaves. From there, some of the water evaporates through small holes or pores on the underside of the leaves, moving into the air. This process, by which water travels from the roots throughout the plant and then evaporates through the leaves, is called transpiration. The small pores on the underside of the plant's leaves are called stomata. Each leaf has thousands of stomata. Water vapor is released through these holes during transpiration. From ice to vapor. Water may also change into water vapor through a process called sublimation. Even in ice, water molecules are in constant motion. They just move more slowly when water is in its solid state. Still, some of the molecules at the surface of ice will eventually escape. During sublimation, some of the molecules change from snow or ice directly to water vapor without melting into water first. When it's windy or when the sun is shining, sublimation happens faster. This is why, on bitterly cold, bright sunny days, ice often disappears from sidewalks and highways. Sublimation also happens in your freezer. Look at a tray of shrunken ice cubes that have been left in the freezer for a really long time. They have shrunk because of sublimation. There is no liquid water in the ice tray, but the ice cubes are smaller. That's because the water molecules in the ice have transformed directly into water vapor. In the opposite process, water vapor changes directly into ice, such as snowflakes or frost, without first becoming a liquid. This process, called deposition, also occurs when temperatures are very cold. During deposition, water vapor comes into contact with a cold window pane and changes to frost, creating these beautiful patterns. What goes up must come down. Once water vapor is in the air, wind moves it around and lifts it high into the sky. Thanks to the wind, 
water vapor can travel a long way from where it started. As the vapor rises, it cools and forms tiny droplets of water. This transformation from water vapor to liquid water is called condensation. Tiny water droplets form bigger droplets, which eventually form clouds. These photos show clouds of various sizes, shapes, altitude, and moisture content. High in the chilly sky, droplets bump into each other and join together to form bigger droplets. They also form around dust, pollen, and other particles that attract the water droplets. These particles help water vapor condense faster. When billions of these droplets join together, they form clouds. Eventually, the water droplets become too heavy to stay in the air. Gravity pulls them toward Earth, and they fall as rain. If the temperature in the cloud is below the freezing point of water, the vapor in the air forms ice crystals instead of water droplets. These tiny ice crystals bond together to form larger crystals. When these crystals become too heavy to stay in the cloud, they fall as snow. Under some weather conditions, rain and partially melted snow may become a slushy, wintry mix. In other conditions, water may freeze into ice pellets, sometimes called sleet. These pellets make a tapping or hissing sounds as they hit objects on the ground. Dewdrops. Sometimes when you get up in the morning, you see water droplets on the grass or on spider webs. These drops are called dew. Dew is formed by the condensation of water vapor in the air. When the air cools down at night, some of that water vapor condenses and becomes liquid water. In the morning, the water has collected into the little droplets that you see. Ice may also strike the ground in the form of hail. Hail usually occurs during warmer times of the year when thunderstorms carry droplets high into the atmosphere. There, the temperatures are cold enough for droplets to join together as they freeze and form hailstones. The size depends on how much water freezes around it before it falls to the ground. We sometimes hear hail banging on cars and roofs during the summer. The various forms of rain and ice crystals falling from the sky are all types of precipitation, the name of this part of the water cycle. A photo of precipitation in the form of ice crystals bonded together in larger crystals out of supercooled water droplets, better known to most of us as snow. Underground water. Once water has fallen back to the earth as precipitation, it has to go somewhere before it starts to evaporate and begin the cycle all over again. This step in the cycle is called collection. Because 70% of our planet is covered with water, most of the precipitation ends up back in those bodies of water, ocean, lakes, rivers, and streams. Some, though, falls onto land. Making sense of cycles. Clouds come in different sizes, shapes, and colors, and they can be found at many different altitudes or heights. For example, fog is a cloud that is close to the ground. The size and shape of a cloud may depend on temperature and wind in the sky, as well as how high the cloud is. Based on facts and pictures in this book, think about why certain clouds might be different colors and shapes. What do you think makes some clouds thin and wispy and others heavy looking, and some almost completely white and others very dark? In certain regions, the water trickles down hillsides, mountains, and slopes until it runs into a river or lake. This water is called runoff, and sooner or later it finds its way back to an ocean. About 20% of water that falls to earth soaks into the ground. It seeps through the top layers of soil and is pulled deeper by the force of gravity. The water in this spectacular waterfall in Norway started out as precipitation falling to earth and collecting into small mountain streams. As shown here, those streams flow into larger rivers, which eventually find their way to the sea. Watering the animals all animals, including humans, need water to survive. Many animals get it by drinking fresh water or by eating plants, which contain water. Water constantly circulates through an organism, bringing nutrition and energy to every organ and cell in every part of the body. It eventually leaves the organism and returns to the water cycle. Humans and other mammals sweat, which releases water into the air, and therefore into the water cycle. 
Mammals and other types of animals, even insects, also urinate, which releases liquid water into the water cycle. Fish take in and get rid of water through their gills. Other animals, such as frogs and lizards, absorb and release moisture through their skin. Every type of animal has to get rid of waste material somehow, and they all do it in different ways. Eventually, the water reaches a level called the water table. The depth of the water table varies from location to location. Above the water table, the underground water trickles around rocks, stones, and sand flowing downward. Below the water table, every crack, pore, and air pocket in the ground is completely filled with water. This area is called the saturated zone because it is saturated with, or full of, groundwater. This is a source of drinking water for many people around the world. They dig wells, searching for an aquifer in the saturated zone. An aquifer is an underground area that contains a great deal of groundwater, enough to serve the people of a community or to irrigate farmland. This diagram shows how groundwater collects below the surface. In hot water. The deeper underground the groundwater goes, the hotter it gets. Sometimes groundwater is pulled so deep into Earth's crust that its temperature can reach the boiling point. In some places, this water then returns to the surface in pools called hot springs. Sometimes, a cold spring feeds into the same pool. This cools down the water so people can enjoy soaking in the hot spring. Sometimes, people add cooler water to control the heat. In other cases, as the water circulates to break the surface, it naturally cools down again, making the hot spring a suitable temperature for human relaxation. It's not only people who enjoy soaking in hot springs. In Japan, macaw monkeys warm up in the hot springs during the cold, snowy winter. Thanks for watching! Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoyed this story and would like to hear the entire book, please check out the links in the description box below.